Hey, so you've been asking us, hey, okay, what is the top three objections for insurance agents and how do I properly handle those? So I'm gonna go over all three. Okay, one, two, three. I'm also curious, what do you think they are? What do you think is under each one of those and how do you think we're gonna overcome these? Okay, so I want you to think about this. When you're getting objections, first of all, like a lot of objections can be categorized in similar buckets, but I want you to really slow down don't get so worked up about objections because really I've got a very simple process that I'm going to outline of how you can overcome these objections specifically and every objection that you ever get in the future by the way that I handle these. Objections don't scare me. I actually welcome objections and technically you may not agree with this, but you may after I explain it. I actually like objections. No way, right? I actually do. I like objections because it shows me that the person isn't easy to sell. Think about it. Do you want a client that everyone can sell and go replace your business at any time? Or do you want someone that's actually difficult to sell that the next agent is not as good as you and won't be able to sell? Well, if you chose the latter, guess what? You like objections too. Okay, so let's go through these. Okay, the first one. Okay, number one, one of the most common objections we get, we hear, and that you're concerned about and that you're asking about constantly, which is why we're doing this, is I'm not interested. Okay, so think about this. This is a, what does this mean? Let's define this, okay? I'm not interested. Well, it means that they're telling you they don't have interest in whatever it is. But a lot of times, what you call them and say, hey, this is Cody. I'm getting back to you about this. I'm not interested. Well, you could have just said your name and they just say it. Well, what does this mean? This means that this is a very common just response that clients give, prospects give, people, human gives, right? Because you go to Best Buy and you walk in and, and, they, and, 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 and I go there for a reason. Let's just say I go there tomorrow morning and I'm looking for a TV and I walk in and they say, how can I help you? And I say, just looking, just shopping. Well, why do I say that? It's because I just don't want to be sold, right? I want to just go do my thing, even though I know what I'm looking for. I'm technically lying. Well, you're hearing the same things, by the way. They say I'm not interested. What they really mean is that they don't know what the heck's going on. They just want to move on. They want to throw up a defense mechanism and see if they can get you off the phone because really nobody wants to talk to a salesperson on the phone, right? So they say I'm not interested. Totally understand. Here's why I'm calling. You actually requested this. You may not remember, but you requested this. And here is why I am calling you today, right? So let's just say that you're in your script. Okay, let's kind of role play a little bit. Say you're in your script. Hey, this is Cody. Betty, I'm getting back to you about your Medicare. You requested information about this. This is why I'm calling you, right? Or whatever, right? Like, oh, not interested. Okay, Betty, I totally understand. A lot of people say that. I'm simply calling because you returned this card and you signed it saying you wanted new information related to the 2022 Medicare changes for 2023. And you fill it out. They sent me to help you with it. I have a lot of people to help, so I can't spend much time, but I would like to drop off some new information so that you have it. Take me about 10 minutes. Should we do that today or tomorrow? Well, I've got a doc's appointment today, which seniors say, and then the whole day is like over, by the way, right? Uh, I can't do today, but okay, so you can do tomorrow. Okay, morning or afternoon tomorrow. I'm also assuming they could do tomorrow because they couldn't do today, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Okay, morning or afternoon. Um, actually, I like mornings. Okay, cool. Uh, wow, my morning's busy but I could probably squeeze you in at either um, 9.30 or 11. Again, it'll be very brief. I gotta get to the next appointment, uh, probably 9.30. Okay, perfect, right. And then you go through qualifying. All this is in our ebook, by the way, at codyaskins.com forward slash ebook, okay? But if you think about this, it was very simple. It was a knee-jerk reaction, so to speak, right? A defense mechanism. They're throwing up a fence between you and them. And then you just gotta chill, right? And relax, be like, hey, I get it. I would not be interested either right? Like be more agreeable in what you're saying. Okay. So I'm not interested. That's a common one. A lot of people talk about that, but you can overcome this one very easily. Okay. Number two, what do you think number two is? Okay. You curious? Number two, I already have insurance. Okay. Now this is a common one. Guess what? I love this one. This is one of my favorite objections in the world to receive. Why? Because I already have insurance means they believe in it. I already have insurance means they own it. I already have insurance means they were sold before. Guess who the easiest person to go sell is? The person that you just sold. Like if you, if you want to cross sell or add a new product to somebody, let's, let's just say that you want to sell life insurance to all of your PNC clients, right? Whatever. 
Guess who the easiest, should you go to random people that don't own anything with you and, and ask them about life insurance? Or do you think the easiest people to sell life insurance are the people that are already allowing you to manage their home and auto insurance? It's this client base, it's these people. So when I already have insurance, I think that's great. They believe in it, it's easy. Also, if you're really good at your job and you're really good at building rapport and you're really good at following up, this is not gonna be that hard simply because, if you think about it, they already own insurance. What are insurance agents horrible at? We're good at building relationships typically, right? If you were to size yourself up right now and say, yeah, I'm pretty good at building rapport. I'm pretty good at talking to clients, right? But we're not good at following up. So we, we, we sell life insurance policies or insurance policies and we never follow up. You know, you're guilty of it. And we're also not very good at like checking in with clients from a customer service standpoint, right? We're like policy peddlers. We just sell, dude, who's the next, here's the next one, boom. Here's the next one, right? We're like, we're like a, you know, we're, we're like building Big Macs, double cheeseburgers on, on a, on a, you know, on this, on this, on this long, like moving conveyor belt. And we're just going to the next one, box it up, baby, box it up, right? Pay me. Well, every once in a while, you got to remember that majority of insurance agents are also that way. I bet nine out of 10 of you, maybe 9.5 out of 10 of you, maybe all 10 of you that are watching are terrible at follow up and terrible at servicing your customers, which means they own insurance. Great. They're giving you this objection right now. They own insurance. Great. They bought it. Great. They have an agent. Great. I bet they don't even know who the agent's name is. I bet the agent hasn't called them or talked to them since they bought it. Right? So how do you respond to that? I already have insurance. Awesome. I knew you did. Most people purchase insurance, insurance eight time, five to eight times over the, over the course of their life. And I guarantee you the agent hasn't followed up, he hasn't checked on you, and you haven't, he hasn't serviced your account, and he hasn't checked to make sure that you're paying the absolute best that you can because situations change, right? So because you request the information, I'm just gonna give it to you, and we'll check and see what's going on. Okay, so what time of day is normally best for us to get together? Like it's easy, be more agreeable, and be honest. If you're thinking something, just say it, right? Don't try to like dance around stuff. Just be honest and attack the situation, right? I already have insurance. Okay, number three, okay, before this turns into a super long video, right? Number three, okay, is this good by the way? If you're loving this, throw a comment below, let me know how it is, and also maybe share this to another agent in your office that needs this, right? And it's, Dylan, we should have charged for this, okay? I uh, just decided, okay, number three, okay? But maybe not, because you're subscribers. I can't afford it. <laughs> this one drives me nuts. Why? Not in, a, not in a bad way, but it drives me nuts that people complain about this because homeless people can afford stuff, right? Everyone has money. There's more money in circulation right now than any other time in the world. Why? Because we pretty much doubled all the money in circulation back during COVID, which means that there's more money available on the planet right now than ever before. So for someone to say they can't afford it, everyone can afford something. They also can't afford the Starbucks they're drinking, probably, could they, right? They probably, also probably can't afford the, the Mercedes they got rolling out, out of the driveway, right? They also probably can't afford, you know, they're sending their kids to Christian school, right? They probably can't afford, you know, the, the steak and wine that they get every Friday night with their friends, but, they, but you know what? It's social hours, so I gotta do it, right? They can afford what you have to offer, and what you have to offer is more important than what they're currently paying for. It's more important than coffee, whether they believe it or not, right? It's more important than, than, the, than, the, than the $70 bo bottle of wine that I personally love as well, okay? But they can afford it, right? Just back in to this, first degree, keep it simple. I understood, I, underst I completely understand, right? A lot of people say they can't afford it. Naturally, you'd be surprised. The new programs they're coming out with now, they're less than the old ones, which means if you are paying for insurance at all, this is gonna be better than what you think it is, okay? Like, have a response that's agreeable. Also too, I like the agree, answer, ask, simply because when I agree, what it does is it buys me time to move into the next phase of what's going on, okay? So when you think about these and you're hearing these different objections, right? I'm not interested, I already have insurance, I can't afford it, or any other objections. We, we get these a lot. We get a lot of questions from y'all which is why we're shooting this video. But no matter what objections you get in the future, okay? Stop, take a breath relax and realize they don't mean the objection 90 plus percent of the time and they're given objections how many clients do you have uh we're close to about 3,000 clients 3,000 yeah. if you had to start over today okay you had to completely start over how fast could you get back to 3,000 clients with what you know today with what i know today maybe three years wow four years <laughs>